Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the F124 Driver Career Mode. Fresh off of a single point paying position in Monaco, we head now over to the Western Hemisphere and pay a visit to the Canadian Grand Prix. Now, taking a look at the uh, little weather icons for qualifying and race, we are indeed going to be seeing some weather involved. Uh, so, wet track conditions will be out and about for both the qualifying and the race. Uh, it looks like, honestly, it's probably going to be wet throughout both of those sessions. We may not see any slick tire running in the course of this one, but let's take a look at the messages and see if they have the more detailed weather report for us this week. All right, so let's take a look and see if the weekend preview is going to have the weather report. It doesn't have the weather report. Still working to catch up to Logan Sargent, or yeah, Logan Sargent in the uh, rivalry and uh, have a few jobs left to do. We've managed to move just ahead of Alpine in the uh, in the list, and this time we are actually going to be smart and not run with old engine components. You can see the failed MGUH from the Imola race, the first DNF of the season, but we are going to have a pretty fresh-ish engine going in overall. Uh, it's not going to be a huge difference because we are expecting a lot of rain, uh, and but there is a decent amount of power available around this circuit. But let's head to qualifying. It is time to go qualifying in Canada. A historic track. Looks simple, it's anything but. Welcome to Montreal. So here we go, turn it up for our first run in the qualifying session. You can see on the full wet tires, so the rain is coming down quite heavily and it's going to be a decent challenge. We're fueled up to do a couple of flying laps, although the battery does burn down quite a bit over the course of the lap. And ooh, big slide coming out of turn two there. And we have a uh, Williams all over the back of us, which is going to just distract. And we're barely keeping it on the road right now. Trying to find the limits of the grip is so difficult around this track. See, having to feather the throttle to keep the back end compliant. Definitely harming uh, the Williams lap time, but it's their fault for rocking up right to the back of us at the start of a, a flying lap. They could have left themselves a little space. We're probably not going to be all that quick. We are having to kind of look into the mirror a little bit just to make sure he doesn't send a lunge up the inside. Work through the uh, pile of chicanes that is the Canadian Grand Prix track. It's just chicane, 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 chicane. And then this lovely hairpin down at the end of the track, sliding under braking. Joe Guan Yu sets the first lap time, the first benchmark, for 1 minute 23s. Not a, exactly a, a ripper of a, a lap time, but here we are burning down the battery. Pierre Gasly goes to the 22-2s. Perez even a little quicker into the 21s with the uh, front running cars as we come out of the wall of champions, the final chicane. And we go a 23-6, so not a very good lap. We try to get out of the way. So here we are starting up, or just finishing our next flying lap since we are doing kind of continuous run plans, we'll be skipping through. So we do improve a significant amount. Now, later on in the session, we're on the intermediate tires as the track is gradually starting to dry up. Still raining actively, but the rain is lightening up. You see, we found three seconds there. It puts us provisionally P1 as we're one of the first ones to get an intermediate tire run done on the circuit. The sergeant going through. So two and a half minutes or so left, and we're coming to finish our final flying lap. We didn't quite time it perfectly. You can see we're just about out of fuel. We are going to find another 1.4 seconds to extend the P1 advantage. However, everybody else is going to get to go uh, around this last lap and see if they can improve well, as the track conditions we were still we'll continuing to improve. So we managed to hang on to P9 overall. We get shuffled back by kind of the front running teams, but still, even on the Inters, not everybody putting up a good one. There seemed to be a little bit of kerfuffling going on, as you can see, with all the five-place grid penalties for so many drivers. So we'll be starting P8 uh, as a result, uh, unless anybody else has any engine penalties that they need to take. But starting inside the top 10 after scoring points last time out is a good move. It is the second largest French speaking city in the world and home since 1978 to the Canadian Grand Prix. Welcome to Montreal.
it is a 2.7 mile circuit. There's a top speed of just under 200 miles per hour. We have the DRS zones, 14 turns, tight corners, a narrow track, a knowledgeable, enthusiastic fan base, and one of the best stops on the Formula One calendar. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks like for today's race. Max Verstappen put in a fantastic lap yesterday and he'll start from pole position. Edging out Lando Norris, he'll start from P2. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Leclerc, Perez, Sainz, Hamilton, Oldtimer, Sonoda, Ocon, Oscar Piastri, Stroll, Ricardo, Bottas, Russell, Sargent, Gasly, Joe, Fernando Alonso, Hulkenberg and Alex Albon picks up the last spot on the grid. And now it's time to head down to the track. Well, you're very welcome to the commentary box. I'm Alex Jakes. Alongside me, an authority on all things motor racing. It's a warm welcome to Naomi Schiff. Now, those final hours before a race, did you have a routine? Well, every driver certainly has their own way of preparing themselves before a race. But I can tell you that pre-race rituals are a real thing. When I was in go-karting, I used to touch every wheel in a specific sequence before I got into the cart. And then I stepped up to cars and had a specific set of fireproof base layers just for race day. So watch the drivers when they're on the grid. Some may be sitting on the floor and isolating, others may be up to other things that they do. But these little things really help their minds get ready for the race. Here we are on the grid for the race in the absolute pouring rain. It is expected to be absolute pouring rain the entire way through it. So it will be wet tires onto wet tires. Unfortunately, we had to already use a set of wet tires in the qualifying session. So we will only have one fresh set of wets and our next run will be on those slightly damaged ones as will likely everybody else. But here are the five red lights up and out and getting off the line in the slippery conditions. We get a decent run alongside Hamilton, a good jump off of Sonoda. We're gonna go to the inside of turn one and that'll give us the outside for turn two to try and sweep around the other cars. We slow down a little bit of contact with Hamilton, but we are gonna be able to slot ourselves up into P6, gaining a, a couple of spots here right at the very beginning in order to slot in. Now I have, no reservations that I'm not going to be anywhere near as close to the pace of these other cars uh, over the race, this especially the Ferraris, the Red Bulls, and the like. However, with no DRS in the rain and still sliding under throttle, pushing very hard, with no DRS and um, only really one big overtaking opportunity, it's going to be uh, possible to kind of almost treat it a little bit like a Monaco and just try and defend my tail off in these slippery conditions. You see already though, 1.3 seconds of the gap to Carlos Sainz in front as we come through the hairpin. Rare times uh, that we use first gear around races, but with it being so wet and trying to keep the engine from totally bogging down, we're going to be using uh, first gear a fair bit, but we have the opportunity to essentially just burn battery down the straight. The AI is quick in a straight line and gets a good run out of the hairpin. And then just kind of try and defend, keep the rear tires stuck to the tarmac as much as possible. As you can see the how wet the conditions are. Verstappen already a 128 as the fastest lap. So very uh, very slow lap times around here. And it's just all about balancing on the throttle and try to keep the cars behind. And of course, strategically managing the deployment of the battery where I use it throughout the lap in order to make sure that uh, I have enough battery to deploy at the very end of the lap where I really need to dump as much as I can because well I need the straight line help but lots of little tiny adjustments in the steering wheel under throttle of course this track very tricky for this because it is so many little chicanes you have a lot of balancing the getting on throttle while turning coming out of all of these chicanes in order to keep the car under grips and even in dry conditions turn two that long right hander at the start of the lap very hard to uh or very easy to spin up the tires as you're kind of changing camber and angle you're kind of coming up that hill the back end loves to step out but you can see just a quick glance there 
already 6% wear on the rear tires, only 2 and 3% on the front. So we're definitely going to be stressing the rear tires quite a bit more. But yellow flag already. And it looks like somebody's dropping down the order. And we have a DRS fault as well. So that's fine. DRS is stuck closed. We're not going to have any issues with it. And it's okay, Logan Sargent down, down. out of the negative. session in this one. A virtual safety car is deployed. So okay, jumping ahead towards later in the lap, um, virtual safety car now ending. We're back to racing speed. Had to be careful not to overrun that delta, and it caused us to really miss our breaking point. We were so slow through there that we uh, don't get a track this morning. However, it gives Hamilton quite a run towards the hairpin. I'm just kind of keeping an eye on him in the mirror there. We're going to go semi-defensive. He decided to tuck onto the racing line, so we're able to maintain the position in spite of the bad exit. Now just need to get, uh, get it back, but you can see already... Losing touch with the cars ahead, not exactly unexpected from what I what I saw in overall race pace here. Down into the final chicane, you can see Hamilton getting very close to the back of us as the car squirms and slides. But we should have just enough straight line speed and battery in order to hold him off. He's having a little look in the slipstream, very tight to the back of us, but not pulling out, not having the overspeed in order to try and make a lunge under braking. So as we get on to lap four of this race, so just a little bit of a virtual safety car interruption, but no, nothing to really trigger any change of strategy so far. And we are holding on to that P6 finish. Need to try and maximize the points as much as we can throughout the season as the uh, development for the cars will bounce up and down. Who knows? Maybe we'll have a jump to the top of this uh, mid-pack battle or even get close to the top pack if we have some really good developments come in but early in the season we've had quite a lot of our developments failing so it's been a bit of a struggle so a lot of races are try and make up some positions on lap one and then just try and hold on and defend and even uh try and make some strategy work we are going to have to make a stop at some point in this race here the wet tires will not go all the way to the end but everybody else also is going to have the same situation where we are where a set, one of the two sets of wet tires was used during qualifying. And so we'll have some, uh, some damage. As we pick up a track limits warning a little bit over, uh, over the line in the, uh, final chicane. And that is something we will have to work, look out for in these slippery conditions to make sure we don't pick up. Yeah, I mean, it goes without saying you don't want to pick up a three, a track limits penalty at any race, but especially here in a wet race where it's slippery and in a race where we're going to be just kind of hanging on to the front of a pack, a train of cars. Yeah, target lap time of 125.5 should be fine for us. We're doing 124.5s at the moment. But jumping ahead now, lap 11 of 35. And you can see those rear tires, 30% on that left rear, significant wear already going on with them. We're getting up kind of towards the pit window, but the front tires still very much in decent shape, but starting to feel the pain of the rear tires. Yellow flags behind in turn one totally stopped in turn two, actually. So there's a huge pileup back there, and a full safety car is going to be deployed. So we uh, are slowing down to the Delta, and we are going to gather up behind the safety car we're going to jump ahead though lap 14 nobody decided to take the cheap pit stop we actually kind of fell off the group trying to catch up or start here and that's fine i just wanted to make sure i wasn't going to crash into anybody but back to racing speed safety car is in the pit lane and parked so we did get a, a benefit of being brought back to the group in front however I, i'm still not expecting to really be able to make inroads into this team of this bunch of cars we are getting now close to the pit stop window and since nobody really went for the early stop of course everybody is going to need to go on to a set of slightly used wet tires coming in we still have quite a ways to go still 20 laps left to go in the race of course fuel load is burning down cars are getting lighter as the race goes on But we are going to start to think about when we want to come into the pit lane. 
The rear tires, you can see, definitely disagreeing with us at the level of wear that they've taken so far in this race. And it's not been a huge amount of action. Hamilton's going to try and go down the outside of us as we cover the inside. He's not going to be able to get quite there as we get decent traction out of the hairpin and start running away. But you can see already 1.7 seconds the gap from us to Carlos Sainz. Out ahead, 1.8 now, and we are just... The start of our pit window is lap 17. So we'll uh, we'll see when we want to start coming in. But the back end really stepping out through the final chicane. Hamilton with another opportunity to make a run at us. Down into turn one, but we've got it covered off. He's not able to get alongside, and on the brakes, we're able to hold the position into turn one. As we see the Ferrari rear wing of Carlos Sainz just going ahead and disappearing and running away from us. We're starting to creep up towards the midway point of this race. Still holding on to a, to a top six position. P6 is a solid haul of points if we can get a hold of it all the way to the end. And it's just a matter of if we can cover, if we don't get jumped in the pit stop phase, we should be able to, as we've already defended for 15 laps from Hamilton, uh, be able to defend from whoever's behind us for the, uh, the rest of the race. It doesn't appear to be any signs of this rain lighting up, so... I'm fully expecting that we'll be going on to the wet tire again. No uh, chance of moving to the intermediates in these kind of conditions. So it is soaking wet. You see a decent amount of spray being kicked up, but the pouring rain on your screen is the big difference. Big slide coming through the uh, final chicane there. You can see the rear end getting all out of sorts. Hamilton again getting a bit of a run into turn one, but a, it's such a short run it's hard to actually overtake. We're going to jump ahead now, lap 18 of 35, and we are looking for our time to come into the pit lane. So okay, break late. Hamilton's going to follow us in and make sure we don't speed. Looks like Verstappen and Leclerc have also made their pit stops ahead. Piastri... Uh, is on track now. going through, so they've made some stops as well. Okay, off we go. Back into and our the teammate also Back following us in. Stop. Decent Fast stop, 2.4 seconds. Onto a set of lightly used uh, wet tires, just a couple percent of damage, but we do have to go longer than our first, or just about as long as our first stint. So we will see how the uh, the opponents handle these slightly worn tires as well. I think they might have circulated a bit more than we did on the wet tires. And you see really uh, fighting the car, the cold tires, not up to temperature, very low grip conditions. We're just slipping and sliding until those tires get into a, a reasonable working temperature window, which is very, it's quite difficult, quite difficult. So even dropping the differential down to try and just get a little bit of uh, power to the wheel that's getting power in these slippery conditions. Try and open up the differential, let the car rotate a bit more as well. You see we're six seconds off the back of Charles Leclerc. And it looks like a couple more of the leaders are starting to come in. So we will see where we uh, filter out. We're just about getting the tires into the operating window now. They just started to go green. So into the pit lane come a few of the cars ahead. Lance Stroll, Pierre Gasly are in there, who has stayed out an extra lap longer than us. George Russell in the pit lane. And we are going to shoot past Joe, Ricardo, no Piastri, and not quite catch Carlos Sainz. We do undercut, gain a little bit of time, but it's very quickly going to be lost but we're on lap 20 of 35 so 15 laps left to go we're back in p6 on this one so just time to continue to drive our race keep the car out of the barriers and make it hard for hamilton to get past us so you can see there's a massive train on the mini map of basically us all the way to the back we are not the quickest car jumping ahead lap 23 of 35 so just a little bit further on and there were some yellow flags behind us, and there is a slow-moving car. Looks to be a blue dot of one of the Alpines, actually. So we might be having our second retirement of the race. Yeah, Esteban Ocon out of the session. 
and that is going to trigger a virtual safety car. So we're not going to get the free uh, catch up as Piastri pretty much crashes into the back of us. I, didn't, I don't think I even clocked that during the race. But we're going to jump ahead at the end of the VSC. You have to slow way down to make sure we don't uh, overshoot it because in the braking zones, it's so tough to manage your time on the Delta. It costs us a lot. You see now uh, we're 14 seconds back at Carlos Sainz. But that's fine. I wasn't worried about the top five positions. I just wanted to hold on to P6 where I was. As Hamilton got caught up in a little bit of uh, fighting with the cars behind Piastri, looking very rapid behind us, a very quick one. He should be realistically up with his teammate in the lead pack where Norris is really turning in some good laps. Looks like Mark talking about maybe being able to go into the intermediates, but we're essentially going to just try and react to the cars ahead of us. If they do choose to go on to the intermediates, then it might be worth it, but the way the track is and the lap times that we're doing it still seems very much like we're heavily, thoroughly in the full wet tire configuration around this circuit. The 10 laps left to go, just trying to keep the, uh, the car pointed in the right direction, defend from the attackers behind as Piastri, realist, really in this stage of the race, Piastri was feeling much more aggressive then when I had Hamilton behind, you can already see some rear tires wearing up. Oh. And a message from uh, from the engineer there, Carlos signs an issue with his car. So we'll see if that issue is enough to start bringing him back towards us. Uh, but interesting. But we're going to jump ahead now, lap 32 of 35. And we're seeing something interesting. Charles Leclerc into the pit lane on this lap here. He was, as you can see, Sainz 18.8 seconds out ahead of us. Uh, Leclerc was actually leading his teammate just before this. And it looks like also some cars behind us coming into the pit lane as well. So it would appear that the, uh, the AI cars, as we have a little bit of a rear lockup and have to drift okay, the car through turn to one, it would appear that the uh, AI cars really struggling with these worn, used wet tires but the thing is if they're coming back in unless they go onto a set of intermediates they're just putting on another set of old the, the original set of wet tires that they tried and Piastri crashes into the back of us under braking so his braking performance significantly better than ours in this and you can see the car just yawing as we get on the throttle trying to keep the rear tires underneath us but yeah that McLaren very good on the brakes in these wet conditions compared to us and it may, it's making the uh, the defensive job a little bit harder through it. But yeah, uh, the AI did some, some weird stuff as far as pitting from the used wet tires onto essentially the tires they used in the first stint, which would definitely be significantly more used up. You can see Red Bull just pulling out of the pits. A McLaren parked in the pits. Another Ferrari. Sainz is in the pit lane. We're only 4.5 seconds back of Leclerc. He stays out on the circuit but we've managed to really reduce the gap. And also, you know, they've just put on more used tires. They're probably gonna have to just, I think there's a, a breakdown in the, in, the, in the AI here of where they just, sorry, tires are worn to this percentage. We need to go in and change them, but they don't have tires that are over that. Um, so we'll likely see them come in again. If they're pitting with only two laps to go, they're probably gonna pit with one lap to go. And there's an opportunity. You can see so many cars behind us diving into the pit lane for an extra stop. So there is a potential opportunity for even more positions. It looks like the Red Bull's still way out in front. Um, Lando Norris in the McLaren in a good spot. Oscar Piastri, of course, hounding us and making my life uh, a bit more difficult and miserable. But the Ferraris are doing this whole extra pit stop thing. That's two spots. We could sneak nearly onto the podium, not quite fully onto it, but we'll be uh, podium adjacent in P4. So let's see what they do on this, the penultimate lap of the race. It's going to be their last opportunity to come to the pit stops if they're going to. A Red Bull is into the pit lane. They're going slowly. McLaren continues on. And Ferraris both into the pit lane. So very weird choice by them. P6 would have been a really nice result for us, but 
I mean, P P4 better. Looks like Mercedes into the pit lane. Kick Sauber into the pit lane. So they're doing really strange stuff back there. And it uh, looks like Norris actually very close to the back of Perez. Does he have the opportunity to try and get past the Red Bull? One second, the gap between them. Can he get himself into P2 this time? And he might just be able to do it if he is, uh, if he's quick. Under eight tenths a second now. Another big uh, rear lockup. I think we're just kind of we were just kind of touching the grass on the right side that was causing that pitch. We were able to maintain control okay, of the car in spite of the, the slide. It's obviously not great for lap time. But of course, the rear tires being worn out also means significantly less grip for them. So. Uh, it's uh, still six tenths the gap between Norris and Perez out ahead of us. We'll see, does Norris have the, the straight line speed, the slipstream, the ability to try and uh, make a send down into the last couple of corners. Verstappen is going to cross the line and win the race. And it looks like Sergio Perez is just going to be about holding on to that position over Lando Norris. So he is going to finish P2, Lando Norris third. We are working our way across the last couple of corners. We actually managed to open up a little bit of a gap to Piastri, although I think they're still suffering from running out of battery at the end of a race. But P4, our best results of the year. They take the checkered flag then here in Canada in what has been another fabulous Grand Prix. Well, that's two race wins in a row for them. I think they'll be really happy with that. I mean, one race win is great, but to have two, you know that you've got it. You're a little bit more comfortable in your skin. This is a great sign of maybe what's to come next. The drivers are en route to the podium as we speak. What a fantastic win for the Red Bull team. They've performed exceptionally today, keeping us firmly on the edge of our seats throughout the entirety of the race. Congratulations to everyone at the team. Top step of the podium again for Max Verstappen will increase his championship lead by another decent margin, which unsurprisingly the Red Bull quite Clearly at the top of the Off performance the charts. Who knows what the sport has in Lando Norris, though, a good P3 time. finish for him. But you can again. see behind three stoppers uh, for a lot of them. One. Carlos Sainz, Leclerc, Sonoda, Alvin, Gasly, Stroll. So all of those three stoppers, really interesting um, to see. I think they just kind of forgot what they were doing. You see, 22.8 was our best lap of the race. Not very good compared to a lot of other cars that got down into the mid-21s. Yeah, uh, I'll take the extra points. Won't complain too hard about it. Nico Hulkenberg, last man running, did not have a very good day, but still, you know, four stop, had to take some extra pit stops. Verstappen grows his lead to 83 points over his teammate Sergio Perez. We are up into P11 now, 21 points, and gets us in a decent spot in the constructors. This is the perfect opportunity to show the world why you belong in this sport. And to show me why you belong amongst my very exclusive clientele. That's a joke. I love working with you. So, we get a new rival um, based on the point scoring. We are now close to Lance Stroll's overall points. So, we become a, a championship table rival with them. We're going to try and overtake them. But let's go ahead and get our uh, specialists set up for the next race weekend which shouldn't be uh, too hard. Lift and coast for 25 seconds, easy peasy. Practice program, no problems. We have 545 uh, development points. We have actually just hit our 70 overall target now. So we've managed to move up just at the end of Canada here because of the good results in Monaco. Uh, Imola, of course, hurt us. But of course, the big points, uh, points haul there. So we still need to pick up two extra driver rating, get 72 to cover the rivalry with uh, Logan Sargent and then now we've got Lance Stroll to start dealing with so 545 development points 
taking a look at what we can afford and get here. Uh, maybe taking a look at the Halo. Nothing we can really do on the power unit front. I can't afford anything on the um, chassis front. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at this Halo rear downforce development. Maybe gamble the rush. It would get us two races earlier. So yeah, we'll go for it. We'll try and get it early. Um, honestly, they've pretty much all been failing anyway. And if it just happens to work, then great. But that puts us to 233 resource points. Um, nothing able to really be afforded now. So let's advance forward, see if our tire analytics data is now going to come through successful, which should be guaranteed since it was a okay, redevelop and the MGUH improved materials comes through. So we do have some upgrades available on the car. One of the most important ones though, of course, is the improved tire wear characteristics by having that tire wear data upgrade done. So hopefully that can bring us more into bounds and keep our tires alive longer through the stints and allow us to be a little bit more competitive with uh, with the strategies of other cars. But a big result, fourth place finish in Canada is huge. And we are headed off to uh, lovely Circuit de Catalunya, Barcelona, Spain next. So a classic track, one that's been around for a long time. We'll see how we go around there. But thank you all for joining me as we're getting close to the midway point of the season. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.